Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles, and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with my pup, Jordy. All the while, fixing it up for some pretty major cruising someday, if that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, please consider sticking around and subscribing. We'd love to have you. So what are we up to this week? Well, the last few weeks we've been working on my friend's boat, and the Zephyrus, to get it ready for some cruising we're about to head out on, and this week we have a real treat. that spacious wheelhouse roof. There's nothing much you can really do with that other than, well, maybe collect some solar energy. Let's get on it. All right then, well, this is a Renogy kit. Uh, we got on Amazon uh, four 100 watt panels, a MPPT power um, charge controller, and wires and clips and stuff to install it. It was, I would say, fairly reasonable at 700 and change Canadian. Um, I'll send, I'll put the exact link of the exact kit we bought uh, down in the description. Uh, it's not the most leading edge, but uh, at least it has an MPPT charge controller, so I'm pretty excited about that. So, first step, let's get the panels on the roof. All right, so the first thing to consider is the layout, where in fact to put the panels. Now there is loads of room up here, and there's a couple of different options which I'll share with you, although I'll probably make decision long before you guys get to comment. I think they're gonna go just straight across and they made, anyway, I'll show you, I'll show you. So this is the layout I've settled on. Um, you can see I couldn't go straight across because we'd be crowding the horns and the antenna up here and the two center ones, I don't want too close to the mast here. I wanna leave enough room that I can stand and work around the other things that are up here on the cabin top. I can still put a foot down along the rail to walk forward. Anytime you put stuff on the cabin top, it becomes a constraint but uh, I'm happy with this now I'm just going to confirm that the interconnect wires are long enough to do this although I'm pretty sure they are and confirm where I'm going to do my um, my uh, through the cabin top fitting which I'll show you in a second Looks okay okay so here you can see that the interconnect wires are plenty long um, to connect up to um, the adjoining panels even though they're staggered so that's no problem at all uh, these panels are wired up in series so they just daisy chain along and then the end one gets the positive down to the charge controller and the one at the other end gets the negative down to the charge controller. So just got to pick where that's going to go through the cabin top. So now there's a few things that the kit doesn't include. One of which is a um, uh, some sort of gland to send the cables down through the cabin top. So this little kit we got on Amazon, remarkably cheap, includes two wire glands sized properly uh, that go into this little hood that I can easily butyl tape to the cabin top. Uh, probably this way and uh, send the wires down through into the uh, into the wheelhouse neat okay then before I get too excited about drilling any holes in the cabin top I have to make sure I'm gonna have a way to bring the wires down from the cabin top and in boats like this there are very few options um, there is one wire chase uh, both sides and I suppose I could probably sneak something through at the back there where I have some other wires But it wouldn't be really easy now the wire chase on the port side is completely chock-a-block full of wires For all the stuff that's already up on the cabin top those of you who watch me rewire this boat are aware of that Now this wire chase over on the starboard side is my best candidate The only thing I think I remember in there is the uh, tubing for the windshield washer squirt nozzles that come out here So let's take this cover off and see what's behind that There we go. As I suspected, only one thing coming through here, and that's a piece of tubing. We're home free. The next step uh, was very straightforward, although kind of yucky, is to pull down this section of overhead, um, which some of you will remember is simply masonite, and uh, flex it in such a way that it'll pop out of there. We go, and out of there. Okay, um, because this was yet to be finalized, it's very convenient that I can get that out relatively easily. Okay, so these are the wires that come down from the horn, which is great because that gives me a locator as to where I think I might be able to come down with the solar panel, probably here somewhere. So that's going to work out great. I can fish into the top of this chase right there. Let's go make some holes. So the next step is pretty straightforward and that's putting the brackets on the bottom and they just bolt on with bolts that are provided with the kit. They just go straight into any one of these uh, locations that you choose. And uh, yeah, nothing much to this. 
And that's the last bracket on. So there we go. Now uh, line it all up. So layout begins basically with just a line down the center of the cabin top. Now I'm not sure this is the center of the cabin top, but this is the center line between the um, light and the mast. So I'm not gonna worry too much if it's not exactly in the right spot because this is all about aesthetics. And whether it's in the middle of the cabin top or not, it's gotta be aligned with these two objects. Okay, so I'm going to pre-drill all the panels in advance of setting them down for the last time. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because you can imagine getting all these wires, which are underneath, connected together, and then hopefully zip tied up and out of the way through this little three quarter of an inch gap um, between the panel and the cabin top would be very, very difficult. So what I'm gonna do is set it all in place as a dry fit and then put screws in the back edge, lift the front edge, do all the wiring, put it back down in butyl tape, lift the back up and put it back down. And be, oh God. You're gonna be here for a while, I'm sure, so you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And then this panel goes right over the same holes in the other bracket just like that and I'm just gonna put one screw in to act as a locating pin and that'll do for now these are nice big size 12 screws that will be just fine put another one up at the front there we go locked in place okay and because the outboard panels basically just shift back a bit I can just use these holes somewhere there somewhere I can't really quite remember where and on it goes. So I just line it up with the lines I drew and uh, decide how much stagger. And I think I'll make the grids line up. You know, just make it sort of tiny. Great. Okay, with all the panels dry fit, it's time to position the gland, which is gonna go right about here, which locates perfectly in that bay I showed you uh, down in the wheelhouse. Now, I can't put it centered because underneath here, and I won't show you, there's the control box where the wires attach. So I'll have to put it offset slightly. So it's basically gonna go right about there. Look where that control box is, there somewhere, right. That looks really good to me. Now, lifting this up and down is getting annoying. That's where the four equally sized beer cans come into play. And uh, they'll be used to hold up all four of these panels as I do various parts. That one's not getting open soon. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna mark where the holes are so I don't forget. And then the hole through will be slightly behind there. I'm gonna say about there. And then there's little rubber glands in here, which I want to remove and uh, without breaking any of the gland fingers, because it's much easier to run uh, a wire through a gland uh, before it's actually in these little fingers here. And the bulk of these wires will be below. Only a short section of it is above. That's why it's much easier to run it through the rubber part of the gland first. Okay, so the rubber grommets are on the uh, wires, so I'll just run these through here and down the hole. Put it back over its holes. And now to get on with the butyl. My favorite stuff. Okay, I'll just take a minute or two to massage it into place a little bit. Make sure it's exactly where I want it to be. Okay. And drop it into place. I love seeing the butyl come oozing up and around the screw. Oh, that's fantastic. That is not gonna leak. Okay, so the rest of my beer can wizardry is basically uh, lowering it to a single can height and um, do the wiring while the panels are basically in place. 
I just needed four objects the same height to make this really easy. Okay. You see these? Uh, as usual, I'm sure several of you were yelling at the screen as I put the wires in, neglecting to put the uh, gland nuts on. Now, it's possible that I can redo these without taking this off, but because I've just put it on, I'm not going to worry about it too much and take it off and do it right. No harm, glad I didn't put it down with 5200. All right, that's certainly salvageable. Okay, get these wires out of here. Okay, the nuts are back on and we can run the wire back down. And there we go with the full kit. So the rubber gasket gland and the nut to go over it. Okay. So back to the single height can setup. And we'll wire up our panels by taking this one out and heading over to the way over to the port side. All right. I'll take the other wire off the farthest panel and daisy chain it to the next panel. This one to this one and then the other wire back out to the other end of this panel. Lovely connectors these. So now the point of this beer can exercise was so that the panels all lined up together or largely lined up together I was able to zip tie the cables up to the bottoms of the panels so that they'd be nice and tidy and not sitting around on the uh, cabin top um, possibly picking up moisture or possibly rattling in the wind or something like that so I don't know what you're going to be able to see really but I'm going to take a bunch of zip ties and uh, see if I can't connect this all up together a bit all right well I've been zip tying away they're all up in the way they're certainly tidy but I worry about them rattling so it may be possible I'm going to have to um, sleeve them or something with something uh, soft. I don't know. Anyway, let's get these clans tight. Okay. Okay, so I've cut all these strips of butyl uh, to put underneath the brackets. Back all right, to the front. There we go. Okay, so we'll see how well the last step here works, which means dropping it back down. There we go. And the last one. And now locate them at the front with some screws. Yep, just fine. This isn't precarious at all. Excellent. So this side down first, and then this side down on top. Last one. And done. Okay, here we go. So let's get these cables uh, fished down through the chase here. I had them all untangled a bit, but of course, pumping them through the floor. I suppose I could have done the detangling before I started the camera. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? There we go. Tape on the ends because after all, uh, these are now live with the panels running. So this is just gonna come in here, down, through, here. There we go. Okay, let's get some strain relief on those. I wanna keep it clear of the wire here for the horn and I'll explain why. Um, I may have been overly ambitious here, but I left quite a lot of slack with the wire for the horn um, because the horn may need to be replaced soon and I wanted to be able to pull it through. That's why there's no strain relief down there for it. But the truth is I could remove this panel relatively easily. There we go. What I really have to do is put the mahogany strips on that will finish this up. Yeah. All right then, so the time has come to install the solar controller and I debated a lot where this would go. It could have gone there, it could have gone here, it could have gone somewhere else altogether, but I've opted to put it right here, which is out of the way, but very conveniently located for the wires and such. Now, <laughs> these hang on these lovely little uh, keyhole type holes on the back 
And now I've always hated anything that installs this way because I've never been particularly good at figuring out exactly where the holes are to make the template on the wall. Yes, you put the tape measure on them and you square it up and you do all that. But for some reason, I always get the screws just a little bit. There they are. I didn't really want to show you the process of putting them on because they're not perfectly aligned, but they're not bad. They're not bad. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to connect up the wires. And I've just taken tape off the end um, because I wanted them taped up because of course these are now generating electricity so I don't want them to short out to each other. But before you can put the wires from the panel, you have to put the wires down to the battery because of course you have to give, you have to power this thing. Um, so these wires gotta go down through the floor to the batteries which are directly below, very, very convenient. Now, there's a couple of things about this. These wires should be fused in other words, the, the power coming from the panels to the charge controller should be fused and the wires from the charge controller to the battery should be fused. And the various fuses um, that I have bought to do that, I'm not happy with. So I'm going to install it today to test it, just proof of concept, and then I'm going to disconnect it before um, or until I get the correct fuses for it. Yeah, I finally got smart and removed and moved this cabinet over so I can get something done over here. This is not at all an elegant little hole here, but this whole area is going to get changed. In fact, this may get put somewhere else, so I'm not going to get too wound up about it. Okay, I've marked the positive, and it's time to actually make these connections to the machine here. Straightforward connectors. Very nice. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, well I saved you the joy of crawling around in the bilge with me and connecting these up to the main uh, battery bus that's down there. But you can now see, oh, time to take the film off. We now are reading a battery voltage of 13.2 volts. 13.2 because of course the battery charger, which is a combination uh, inverter battery charger, is currently in play. So I'm gonna turn off the shore power and see what that says. There we go. So that should be actual battery power. Not bad, down to 12 and a bit. Good, okay, time to connect up the solar, what fun. Okay, as previously uh, illustrated, I ran the cables down through this chase and I'm not gonna cut these wires because it's possible we may put the charge controller somewhere else, so I wanna leave these. So I'm just gonna basically coil them up under here and uh, we'll put some nice uh, restraint on that and run the wires right in to the controller. Now the first thing I need to do is identify which of these is positive and which is negative because it's not marked on the wire. So the easiest way to do that is with a voltmeter. Here we go, so if I rest that in here, you probably won't be able to see this. I'm going to read off Minus 78 volts, wow, cool. Uh, and the other way around, we have positive 78 volts, making this one the positive, which is why I'm going to put that piece of tape on it. Okay. Shows the battery as quite low. Interesting, it's down to 11.6. And as soon as I put this up in here, it'll start to charge solar power. There we go. Excellent. Well, before I tidy this up, Let's play a little bit with this display. Now it's fairly overcast today, but I would expect to be able uh, to get a few amps. Apparently I can cycle through 64, 66 volts off the panels and we're putting 5.3, 5.4 amps uh, into the batteries, which really isn't too bad considering the day. Pretty much entirely overcast so you can see the sun poking through there through the clouds just a little bit so the panels are chugging away quite happily at 65 watts not bad when you consider the type of day it is <laughs> that had me concerned for a little while why the voltage was so low uh well it's because as soon as i turned the shore power off which turned the charger off it uh, instantly went into invert mode and started running uh, the two electric heaters and all the other electrical devices that were on the boat at once really drawing down the battery voltage but anyway so we're good now now that's all set so uh, it seems to work everything seems quite nice pulling 6.2 amps Sun is brightening up a little bit it's so fun I've had solar panels before I just love watching that number I love it you're always hoping to hit that, you know, that peak for the day. Keep a little chart here. Did we ever get 30 amps? Did we ever? Anyway, what fun.
and a wire clip in here to make this reasonably tidy. Well, I've been having a heck of a lot of fun with this solar setup. We haven't had a lot of sun since I installed it, but here we are cranking at 12, 12 and a half, almost 13, 13 amps. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, uh, it doesn't seem to take an awful lot of sun to uh, to make this thing really punch, which really is great. So uh, 13 amps at a roughly 13.8 volts, that's a lot of watts. I'm really, really impressed. Of course, here at the dock, it's not all that meaningful because we have shore power. In fact, I have to disconnect and run the batteries down off uh, something to actually get this to do anything because otherwise the batteries are always fully topped up. Anyway, it's been fun. Everything is ready to go. And now, sadly, I have to disconnect it. Yes, because I haven't been able to secure the proper fuse yet. Um, I do have to make sure I am disconnecting the panels and making sure that I'm not driving power into uh, the batteries through there. Um, but anyway, it's nothing but a fuse to pick up and then we can plug this back in again. Folks, that wraps up the solar installation. I'm really pleased with it and it's pumping out lots of watts for us. So that's really great. I had intended to do a full sort of uh, analysis of loading and power and solar uh, application, uh, but I'll do that in a subsequent episode because this one's already running long and that's an episode all to itself. Cheers. Well, those of you who've been following along at all will know that a couple of weeks ago, I put out a request uh, if there was anyone in or around Port Townsend or nearby that could help me pick up some uh, hot galvanized um, screws that were a bit hard to get here. And well, lots of people, what an outpouring of support I had for that. Lots of people came up with solutions from all over the world, Australia even. Anyway, it turned out that one fellow in particular, Nick Richards, uh, lives a couple hundred feet from um, Admiral Supply in Port Townsend and uh, went straight out there and picked up the screws for me. So grateful. And so I haven't opened these yet. Here's the actual package he sent. And everyone loves a little package opening. So let's see what these screws look like. Pretty excited. Ah, what do we got in here? We got something very well packed is what we have. Compartments and everything. Um, well, this looks to me like a package of screws. Yes, indeed. Now, I have never actually feasted my eyes on a hot dip galvanized wood screw in my life. Lag bolts, very common, but an actual slotted head wood screw, very rare for me. There's the beauty. Now, isn't that a wooden boat screw? If you've ever seen one, that's absolutely lovely. And that is going to solve my little problem very very interesting well there's more stuff in here what is going on um it is very securely uh taped and wrapped uh let's have a look here i think i opened this upside down which is what's making this so difficult my goodness what on earth could this be well hang on a second i have a suspicion i know what it is <laughs> Nick, what do we have here? We have a beer. Port Townsend, I haven't finished reading it myself. Brewing Company Porter. Well, look at that. Well, we have a uh, beer of the week for this week, which you'll see shortly, although I'll have to pre uh, refrigerate it in the meantime. Well, Nick, thanks ever so much. Um, and we'll be drinking Port Townsend Brewing Company Porter uh, in just a few minutes. Let me tell you a little more about Nick. Well, Nick's an avid sailor and adventurer who's been sailing and plying the waters of Puget Sound and beyond in his 1966 Spencer 42. And uh, he seems to really be enjoying himself and loving the boat life completely along with his pup, Dexter. So he's just started a new YouTube channel called Renegade Show, and I'll put a link down below where he's starting uh, to um, document some of the pretty significant work he's doing to the boat, including some uh, major cabinetry refitting. And uh, so if you enjoy the uh, interior cabinetry uh, type of genre, I think you'd really enjoy his uh, channel. So check him out. Uh, it's uh, Renegade Show, and again, I'll put the link down below. Well done, Nick. Thanks again. Well, hello there and welcome to the Beer of the Week. Special Beer of the Week this week because, as I mentioned before, Nick Richards down in Port Townsend sent me up a bottle of the Port Townsend Brewing Porter uh, when he sent me up the screws that he so kindly sent up for me. So we're going to give this a try. Haven't had a bottle uh, board in the last little while because we've been drinking a lot from cans. All right, so here we go. Classic. Will I be able to do a decent pour? I have a feeling this one will be okay. There we go. Nice dark porter. 
Let's have a go at this. Absolutely yummy looking. Cheers. Wow, nutty, rich. I don't like all porters the way I don't like all stouts, but this is particularly good. My goodness, it's really good. It's almost a stout. Mm, absolutely fantastic. If you find yourself in Port Townsend, check out Port Townsend Brewing and try their porter, amongst several other great beers that I've had down there when I was there. Well, very good. Um, what a super week. So happy with the solar power. So power, I think that will have to be the word of the week. If you use, I mean, if you'd like to win a Travels of Jordy t-shirt, use the word power in a comment down below and I'll pick it random from the first 24 hours worth of comments. And if I pick you, you may end up with a Travels of Jordy t-shirt. So, see you next week.